So in struggling with mathematical concepts, especially with Khan Academy and various linear algebras and things like that, um, I came up with this tool to allow me to see what actually happens to vectors as I apply matrices to them. So notice here I have a matrix on the left. Let me get my drawing program here. I have this matrix on the left I've highlighted with this this box here, but I'll do it here in blue. Then I'm applying it to this vector here. And so you can see that the vector is 1, 1, so over 1 and up 1. And this vector is a linear combination of the two basis vectors in my matrix. So here's one basis vector, and here's the next basis vector. And so what do I mean by basis? Well, hopefully you watched the Khan Academy videos. But if you didn't, I'm going to try to explain it, but I am going to rely on you using Khan Academy. All right, basis vectors. So here's one basis vector. It's 1, 0. If you notice, this vector is 1 in the x and 0 in the y. Then this basis vector is 0 in the x, but 1 in the y. And this vector is a linear combination, which is a technical fancy way of saying it's something of this vector plus something of this vector. For example, it's 1 of this vector plus one of this vector. It's a combination of the two vectors. All right, so watch what happens. If I, if I take this vector, so there's one of those vectors, and I'm going to take this vector and draw it right here. There's one of those vectors, one of those vectors. So one of those plus one of those gives me this nice blue vector. So the blue vector, which is th th this is the result here, that this represents the blue vector, and that's the result of 1 times this plus 1. Okay, let's do something interesting here. Let's let's clear this off. Um, let me let me put these boxes back though, and this box and this box. Now watch. I'm going to take this basis vector and I'm going to extend it out to 2 out here, which means I'm going to grab the slider, slide it to the right until this stretches to 2. So then the one basis vector, this first basis vector will be uh, over 2. And then we'll have also one of these as well. So first of all, can you imagine what's going to happen with this red arrow, this first vector? And then can you also imagine what will happen with the blue arrow? I strongly suggest pausing this video and thinking about it, working out on paper if you have to. That would be a great exercise. Let me grab this, and I'm actually going to use the arrow keys to bump it up to 2. Notice the I have this green vector coming out, and then our, our, our result vector is 2, 1. See, look, 1, 2, 1. Okay, so 2, 1, that's our result vector. And then the red vectors represent our original basis vectors, and this green vector is, well, after I warped the original vector, what do I have? I have 2 of the red vector gave me this green vector. So the green vector, there's also a green vector hiding behind this red one. The green vector is uh, our true basis vectors, if you would. So I transformed, there's, the, there's that's where that word comes from, linear transformation. I transformed this red vector into this green vector. In fact, I can accentuate this a little bit. This is the full green vector there. All right, by multiplying or extending it out by 2. All right, well, hopefully you can get an idea. If I take this and, and stretch it out by 2, what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to have one of these green vectors plus one of this green vector, which will, is going to change our resulting vector here. Let's Let's try that out here. I'm going to grab this and stretch it out to 2. You see our result vector climbing as we do that. So now our, res our, our result is 2, 2. Not too shabby. And that's literally all what a linear transformation is. Okay, We still have a linear combination of these two vectors. Let's do something a little more interesting. I'm going to take this, go like that, and like that, and like that. Let's stretch this, this one out. Let's stretch it out 3. Okay, so that's three. All right, um, that's our second basis vector. It's our, if you think of what the word basis means, it's something you're basing your opinion on, or this vector is based off of these two green vectors. Foundation, if you would. Um, what's gonna happen if I grab this slider? Well, let's grab the first one first. I'm gonna take the slider, I'm gonna move it to the left, down to, uh, let's take it to negative one. Can you think of what's going to happen there? Can you imagine? Pause the video and, and th do a mental exercise. If I take this slider and move it to negative 1, uh, what's going to happen to our result vector? Our basis vector is going to stay the same, but our result vector will change. And remember, this 1 here represents, this 1 is 1 times this basis vector plus 
1 times this basis vector. What happens if I change this number to a negative 1? How is that going to change our diagram there? Pause the video, work it out on paper, hopefully print some graph paper. You can Google that and print that, I noticed. Uh, let me go down to negative 1. Is this what you were expecting to happen? Notice the vector is going to be negative 1 times this basis vector. Well, the basis vector is two of these, but negative 1 times that, well, that's negative 1 times this vector. Then we're still adding this second one of these. So one of those, and there you go, that's our resulting vector. So linear combination, quite, quite a simple thing. Now, what happens if I grab one of these sliders here, either one of these zero sliders? Now, I'd, I'd actually pause the video if, uh, if I were you and think about it. What If I grab this zero slider, how's that going to change um, the basis vectors, but then also how's it going to change the resulting vector here, this negative 2, 3, if I grab one of these zero sliders. So pause the video and think about it. All right, so I'm going to grab the 0 over x basis vector here. Let me highlight our basis vectors again. So this is the x-ish, if you would, x-ish. I'm putting ish here because I can do all I want with this. And you're about to see that. And then this is our y-ish, y-ish basis vector. And let me grab this zero slider. I'm going to move this up to the 1. So that's going to change this basis vector up to the 1. So watch what happens to our resulting vector and the basis vector as I do that. You see? So we have negative 1. Negative 1 times this plus 1. That's a 1 there. Times this. So this times negative 1 will result in this and then we're adding one of these so this goes up 1 2 3 so 1 oops 2 3 there you go there's our resulting vector this this plus this gives us this that's what we call a linear combination all right um let me just uh, mess around with these sliders again it would be nice if you could build a similar tool like this and use it but if I slide this up and up and up, the more we go like this, the more our resulting vector is going to go down because we're taking a negative 1 of, these ve of this vector. Eventually, as we get to 3, notice that our result vector is now stuck on the x-axis, if you would, and so on and so forth. Now, what happens if I take this basis vector, I'm going to grab this slider and move it right. I'm going to move it right too. So that means this would that we're going to push this vector right here, we're going to push it so it's basically the same vector as this one. Well, can you think what's going to happen? Again, I'd pause the video, but here we go. I'm going to push it to the push it to here. And as I do that, notice that both of our basis vectors, they're they're essentially the the they're the, they're the exact same vector here. This is equal to this one. All right. Now they don't necessarily need to be equal. I can I can mess the, mess around with this a little bit. Let's take this down. Let's see. Let's take this down to one, and this one we're going to take down to. Uh, let's see. We need to go. We need to go up. We need to go up one more. So if you notice that that this this longer basis vector is a multiple of the shorter one, so it's actually a multiple of 2. So 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 1.5 is 3. So now our basis vectors are what we call collinear, meaning they only span one dimension. This this is a interesting result, since our result vector here must be a linear combination of this vector and, and this vector here, and both of those vectors are collinear, meaning they they're on the same line, if you would. They're pointing the same direction. I hate to use the word point because the mathematicians will freak out over that one, but that's essentially what we're saying here is that they're pointing the same direction. And and by pointing the same direction, they could be neg one could be a negative of the other. But but either way, they're collinear. They're on the same line. So watch what happens when I mess around with our our inputs here. This negative one and this one. I slide this and go up and down like this all I want. 
Or I can go up and down I want all like this. But notice I'm stuck on that line because both of my basis vectors are they're collinear, right? I I can only span one dimension here. I can't break out of this line anymore. I can't get our resulting vector to go over here or here. Right, I'm forced to be within that same line. Now, once I break one of these basis vectors off of the other one, then we're spanning again the dimensions of two, two dimensional. So I can then I can span whatever I want. I can get out here on the plane anywhere I want on the plane. I'm not stuck to this line and only this line. So watch, I'm going to bump this one up just a little bit. But then notice, and it's a stretch, but I can do it. I can, I can pretty much. If I if I I can pretty much use any combination of these, and my sliders they're limited to ten here, so the furthest out I can go is ten on each one. But if if I my sliders would span further, I could get anywhere I want to out here now because my my basis vectors are no longer collinear. All right. Anyway, why why are you going through all this math, Jamie? Well, this is actually relevant, very relevant to uh, game programming. We generally don't. Uh, we have what we call an orthonormal basis, which is basically these red vectors again, these red basis vectors that we started out with. We start with perpendicular basis vectors. Both are unit length one. If you see, we come out here one, we come up here one. They're coli they're not collinear, they're <laughs> perpendicular. And so we call that orthonormal. Um, ortho meaning orthogonal or perpendicular. Normal meaning length one. So... Anyway, um, I know I keep referring you to the Khan Academy videos. I I do strongly suggest trying to get a bigger understanding of the math from Khan Academy. But the critical stuff you absolutely need to know for game programming, I'm going to go through in here. And if you want, want to rely on that, go ahead and try. But again, I, I'd refer to the Khan Academy for further enlightenment.